It's the Line Makers on Sporting News. Sunday night basketball from Oakland. Nuggets at Warriors. Welcome to the Line Makers on Sporting News. I'm Micah Roberts with Rick Heron. Rick, we've seen the Warriors take it to the Nuggets all three games. They've covered all three games. They're on a six-game cover streak playing outstanding basketball, even without David Lee. This is a must-win situation for the Nuggets. How do you see this game going? Well, Mike, uh, you could you could make the argument that the Warriors are playing better without David Lee. Jared yeah. Jackson, like 48 points in, in the two games since he's been inserted in the starting line. It's just a great series. It really is. It, there, no, there's no answer for Stephen Curry. Uh, you know, I mean, no. the guy went for 30 and 13 assists in in game two, and 29 and 11 assists in game three with a bad ankle. That game three performance by, when I was watching Curry, it reminded me of the 70s, ABA, George Gervin with the finger rolls, the English off the glass, off the rim. Very cool to see some guy playing some old, old school basketball. He's the real deal. I, I loved watching that. But I thought that the big thing in game three, obviously Harrison Barnes stepped up. He had a great game. And you also saw Carl Landry was an absolute beast filling in for David Lee down low. Well, I was going to say, to me, even though Jared Jack and going small, to me, the key's been Harrison Barnes, and they yeah. move him to the four spot in David Lee's place. He's had 43 in, in two games. I mean, the guy's average is like eight a game. Yeah. He's had 43 in two games. I mean, the Nuggets had a 13-point lead in, in game three in the third quarter. Um, you think with the Nuggets, I know it's not the same team, okay, and, and, and they'd be a whole lot better off if Gallinari was still there. Sure. But in the playoffs on the road, the Nuggets have now lost 11 of their last 12 road playoff games. They've never been a good road. Right. And you thought during the regular season. 19 and 23 on the road. We now. saw a lot in the second half them play very well, but they didn't play a lot of games in the second half on the road. Not in the first half of the season, they, they were on the road. It seemed like 65, 70% of their games were on the road. So they didn't play a lot of road games. And they didn't play a lot of road games, especially with the type of atmosphere we saw in Oakland, which with the yellow shirts and the rowdiness of the crowd, it was probably the most intense NBA crowd I've seen in a long time. Well, the crowd was fantastic. They stood the whole fourth quarter. The whole arena stood the whole fourth quarter and cheered. I, you know, I mean, you know, we're looking at the Nuggets, a one and a half point favorite in the end of game four, Micah. Personally, I think the Warriors should be one and a half. Okay. Um, I do still like the over again, 212 and a half. The Warriors shot 52.5% in game three after shooting 64%. Yeah, still pretty good. So still still going to shoot. You're going to figure they're going to shoot 50-some percent. And can the Nuggets go in and get a win there? I, I'm asking you. I think they can. I think it's a, the back's against the wall. They're going to play even better. And maybe even have, you know, Andre Miller who came up huge in game two. He only shot two of 13 in game three. Missed a lot of key opportunities. They're going to need him to uh, get a better massage and get a little more relaxation because obviously he was a little tired from his uh, game two performance. And you're going to have to get a more uh, play time out of uh, uh, Wilson, Wilson Chandler. And he's the guy that's supposed to be able to step in and pick up the pace now for Gallinari being out and take more shots. He only took eight shots in uh, game three. He needs to be more involved driving to the basket. He's great inside the paint driving and that's his game and he's not a bad shooter either so i'd like to see him get more involved lawson getting the rest of his guys involved instead of uh you know he, he's hard to stop but you still don't like seeing other guys that are open standing around around the paint. And Nuggets still did have a chance to win with the Iguodala three at the end of the game. He didn't make it. They, they lose 110 to 108. I'm going to say this game's going over again. Your lean's to the Nuggets. I'm, the lean is to the Nuggets, and even though the Nuggets haven't covered uh, six of their last seven games, they have been going over the total in just about every game. Uh, we've seen them go over six of their last seven games, so that looks to be a good side there, but I, I just think with their backs up against the wall here, I also think not only laying a point, point and a half in this game, I think this is the right time to jump on the, the Nuggets adjusted series price. And when they go back to Denver to take a 3 2 lead, and then from then on there, I expect Denver to be able to close the game out. But as a fan, I'm hoping this goes seven because this has been the most fun I've had in a while watching NBA, and uh, it's been very entertaining. And you love to see the Warriors, a team like that, come out and play strong. I had my worst experience as a uh, book director with the NBA when the Warriors knocked out the Mavericks and I had to pay quite a hefty price at 40 to 1 on them so nice. <laughs> it's not quite that bad this time but 
it's been since then that they've been in the playoffs. It's nice to see the Warriors back and infusing some excitement into the NBA. It's great to have one great series, Michael. We got another great series with the Bulls, with the Bulls and the Nets in triple overtime as we speak. Over and the Nuggets. Yep. Thanks for watching.